Hello, adult fans of LEGO, teens, and parents who watch this channel. Over the past couple of days, a number of you have been asking me to give my thoughts about the new LEGO Creator Expert Bookshop. And so here it is. I'm going to be spending some time looking at the official pictures from LEGO in this entire video while giving you my personal thoughts about what we can see from here. Uh, first of all, the important stats about this uh, set. Uh, 2,504 pieces, you can see right there. In the US, this will cost $180. The Euro price for Germany as, as a starting point is 160, and in the UK it's 150 pounds. So, for a change, the prices around the world are pretty well balanced relative to the relative strengths of different, uh, different currencies. And the price to part ratio, again, in the US, 2,504 pieces to be $180, that's a great starting point. So we're off to a good start before even looking at any of the, the major details here. I'm going to focus most of the time looking at the individual detailed pictures that LEGO has given us, and these are pretty good photos, you know, pretty good quality photos. We can actually zoom in like this and look really, really close, which is fantastic. I might as well just start giving you my thoughts right here. Uh, First impression, I like this overall, just in general. I like most of what I see here. And there are a lot of little details that I can talk about along the way. But let me let me actually move through some of the pictures first before I start picking it apart too much. And when I say picking it apart, I don't necessarily mean uh, looking for things to, to complain about. I'm, I'm actually having a lot of things that, that I'm having to skip over right now that I want to focus on that are good. That are, that are positive about this, but some things that I definitely do not like. Uh, and some things that definitely don't match my expectations for this. I think my favorite thing is the overall color scheme. Interestingly, they've done this in two separate parts, once again, so it's two separate buildings, kind of like with the, the pet, was it pet store or pet shop? Uh, with the store on one side and then a apartment, or in this case they call it a townhouse, on the other. So those can be completely separated out. They have a number of base plates included in this. I've, there are some reviews that are already out from places that have, have gotten these you know, on release on announcement day or just before. So be sure to check out uh, brickset.com for example. They have great pictures, including showing you what surprised me is uh, a selection of base plates that include some six by 16 gray base plates. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen that. I don't think I've ever seen that in the, the modern gray era. So the, these pictures right here are just showing you the major modules, the major components, you know, the, the big sub-assemblies that, that make up what you get here in total. I really like this right here. I like that detail. It's just, it's something different. You can see it's just a, a cascade of stacked plates with these quarter round tiles on top. Uh, yeah, I think it's mostly, if not all, just plates beneath there and they're they're stacked up and then the whole thing is hinged from the top so it's put at an angle that makes it a little bit deceptive in a good way and i also like the judicious use of these candle pieces that are stacked up so those are the the candles they're just upside down candles first introduced with the uh, the harry potter series when those first came out uh, this is just looking from uh, from the back, so you can see there's some, some open space towards the back, but a fair amount of the overall 32 by 32 size of this is taken up by stuff that actually gets built up. So I feel like it's it's fairly normal for for the the second half of the the modular buildings that LEGO has made in terms of how much bulk is here. That said, this is the bookshop over here. When I first heard that it was going to be a bookshop or something book related, myself, in my own mind, I was thinking something kind of like the Brick Bank, but with books, you know, <laughs> with books rather than money. So the fact that less than, much less than one half of the size of the 32 by 32 base plate is taken up by the actual bookshop, which is actually this one over here, not this, this over here, is a little bit disappointing to me personally. These are just some more of the individual uh, little modules so to take some of these pictures lego took quite a bit of the thing apart 
in order to let you see inside. So you can see some of the details. The cashier for the bookstore has, looks like, if, if not exactly the, the right amount of space, just a little bit more space than needed to barely fit. Uh, back behind there, there's one of the book shelves over here with some different texturing rather than just stacking up sideways uh, tiles and and uh, plates, you know, trying to get some actual in and out texture. I don't know why they use this exact same ingot. I guess it's supposed to be a series of books using that, that same color. I'm surprised they, they did that, but it might make a little bit more sense once I see the real thing. That is a printed piece right there and a new exclusive printed book cover, Moby Brick, obvious pun right there, which works out absolutely perfectly. Uh, I think the lime green may be a new color. If it's not new, it's relatively new for this piece, for this foliage piece here. And there's some other interesting foliage colors included in this. I love that. I'm always a big fan of Lego's molded, well, almost always a big fan of Lego's molded um, animals and, and such. And this is supposed to be the exact same one that was used uh, in the, the last minifigure series, collectible minifigure series, just color swapped. So it's supposed to be the same one that has switched over to a teal color scheme on its own, you know, uh, to match the bed. <laughs> And I think that's just a great choice, a great touch. You can you can use this as a completely different animal if you want, or you can pretend it's the same animal uh, who has just changed colors. And it has a little terrarium here, so the idea is that you know, it could escape from there, and then it would be hard to find it because it's you know it's in the, the same color. Use your imagination a little bit. Nice grandfather clock right there with the the stud that's upside down, just sitting there behind a, a window that works out pretty well. Nice little uh, floor lamp set up over there. Simple enough, but looks pretty good. And again, they really have to tear the building apart to get you these nice angles down close. I'll, I'll take you back to some of those other official pictures to really drive home what I'm talking about there. But this is a nice little area over in the townhouse uh, down at the, the ground floor. Got a nice pantry, it looks like, over here. Uh, yeah, that's... that's very nicely done and i personally really like this semi-modern uh, uh fireplace you know it's a little bit more modern than pretty much any well definitely most things that lego has done for fireplaces up to this point it, it looks more like what i expect to see in a house that you know i would be looking to rent or buy today in in america at, at least i'll go back to talking about the inspiration for this entire thing as well i just wanted to take you through some of the photos to you know, kind of establish where we are. And this is in the back behind the townhouse. Another new color. That's for the, the little bird that uh, came with Jasmine in the Disney uh, minifigure series. I think it's also been in a couple of sets in white. But this is a new color for for this set in particular. It's an introduction of a new color, which is, uh, I believe that's dark azure. Is that dark azure or is that? medium blue. I believe that's dark azure is what it looks like. And there's medium azure there. And there's teal. So they've got, you know, quite a number of colors that are vibrant and in the blue range these days. That's a basement space. So this guy is taking a ladder, a folding ladder out from beneath that, the, the house, you know, some storage area under there. And I'll go back and tie that all together. And this is, I believe, the first time that Lego has actually officially used that propeller piece, first introduced as a hat uh, you know, a propeller for for kids' hats to go on top of it. Uh, first time they've actually used it as a propeller on a small plane build. So this kid has this as a toy. And noticing back here with the bay window, again, I'll go back, but the bay window uses more of the stacked uh, candlesticks upside down, which I think is very nice. You know, it fills in those gaps on, on the sides without using a preformed large piece to get a large bay window sort of design. And there's a lot of design work, a lot of little details, a lot of, a lot of gaps that are that are filled up nicely using the various types of tiles they make these days. Uh, it's unfortunate that that piece was not pushed down and looks like maybe that one wasn't pushed down all the way over there. But on top of there, there's something else that I actually like. I'll, I'll look at the, the second time around. But just generally, this is done with good attention to detail. Yeah, these are just some of the, the individual smaller builds taken out of it. And, oh yeah, 
I like this bed. I like the colors that are used for this bed. You know, I actually have three there. So the light yellow is is supposed to represent the color of a, a sheet or perhaps the underside of the duvet or comforter on top, the upper blanket. And then you've got the medium azure color over there, which is a sheet down below. And I like this design. It's kind of simple, but it's aesthetically pleasing to me. These look a little bit on the sharp side, but just imagine that they're not that sharp. I think it works out. Okay, here's one of the bookshelves in the bookstore. So you can see the variation once again that the designer went for to not make everything just look uniform. And I, I do appreciate that, but I do wish there was more in the way of book storage in this set, even, even with the size of the place. Uh, this is a new color for that hair piece. First time, I believe that's a new torso for this guy. Dark orange right there, not a very common color for legs, especially with no print. And these are all existing pieces, I believe. And same here again, probably the least interesting of the figures in this set. And there's the kid. He's got the, the banana fan logo there on the front. Lime green color for the uh, original. Originally, it was, it was a uh, scarf for Jay from the Lego Ninjago movie. And that is dark azure. His hat, dark green for his legs, the short legs there. And this is just showing you a little bit of the size comparison, although this is slightly unfair because this building is a little bit closer to the camera than this. Uh, this is this looks to me to be close in overall mass to the Parisian restaurant, which is a great thing. Uh, uh, nowadays, you're, you're just not going to get things that take up the entire base plate, or at least it's going to be very difficult to find things that take up the entire base plate. Even if they come out towards the front, towards the back, they're going to be relatively empty and relatively shallow, like with the, the diner here. And that's just that's all all coming down to to budgeting. You know, these things have to be built to a specific price. And notice here that these two buildings have been swapped, uh, you know, to just show you something different that you can do with that. And I think it still looks pretty good this way. The one concern, though, is that this is going to expose one side of the building and well, one side of the, the bookstore and one side of the townhouse that normally would be hidden away and normally would not look good. Uh, but from what I've seen from pictures thus far, this the non camera friendly sides of both buildings, which have typically been difficult to look at in many cases, are not that bad this time around. There's a lot of the the normal color, the, the, the main color that's exposed. You can see it over here. And then the colors that are exposed that you don't want to see because just the pieces aren't available in the correct color yet, or they need, or the designer needed a different color. Like this is the backing for the, uh, the, uh, the fireplace in there. You know, he would need, would have needed to double up the thickness of the wall in order to have this stay consistently teal along the side. It's still not that bad. It doesn't stand out terribly. It's not like red pieces and yellow and regular blue and stuff. It's you know, as as these things go, it's not so bad. So I'm going to uh, rewind all the way back to the beginning and get in and look at some of the uh, some more of the, the, the smaller details and, and talk about some of those. First of all, birch books over here. These are two printed tiles. And I think the, the typeface looks very nice and just the presentation here in general looks very nice. And yes, those are prints, as is that. There are no stickers in this set whatsoever. That's good. I think that's that's how it should be for something that is in the, the expert, you know, the creator expert line. Whenever possible, they should invest or uh, I should say they should reserve budget for printing just whenever possible. 107 is a reference to the color number for teal, which the designer of this set actually helped to campaign to bring back to the Lego world officially. And uh, looking at some other things, nice little nest right there using the the uh, neck. What is that? Like a, what do you even call that? Not, not a collar, not a scarf. What do you call that? A foofy thing that goes around the neck. Anyway, that's, that's what it is. And it, it's turned into a nest here. What I find more interesting are these different colors used for the foliage pieces. So this is a color that we've gotten before, but then here you've got orange, which we've only gotten in one or two sets and only a couple at a time. 
And then in yellow, I believe that's a brand new color for that part. I don't think lime green actually is now that I think about it. I might be mistaken on that. I just didn't do my research on those individual colors in advance. Usually the best place to look for that level of detail of, of research is the new, is it the new elementary or a new elementary? Either of those, if you search for Lego new elementary, you will find the site and it's fantastic for getting into details about parts uh, just in general. So check them out. But continuing on with this, this tree over here, it's supposed to be a birch tree. And I do spot that olive color for that piece right there, which is the same as that piece right there. Uh, sorry, my, I need to get like a bigger pointer or something for these videos, but hopefully you can follow me. So that same piece is, is here in olive, which I believe is a new color for that. If not new, certainly rare. And then the, the <laughs> plane has gotten stuck up there and that's why the uh, ladder is going to be needed here. But as a birch tree, some of this is working really well, especially with the use of these Technic connector pieces, where normally you try to hide the slots away. You know, once upon a time they made them without the slots, which was great, and then they stopped, and it sucked. Because now you, you, you always want to hide these, and oftentimes they're connected with pieces that don't have the friction ridges on them, and then they just slide all around, and every time you touch the thing, they get misaligned. But in this case, I believe, if not all the connectors, certainly most of the connectors, uh, do have I'm looking right here. Yeah, I think I think if not all of them, most of them do have friction ridges, the parts inside there. Therefore, you can align these exactly how you want. And in this case, you actually want the lines to appear because it's a birch tree and birch bark has those black lines, you know, all throughout it. This is a little bit too universal, I think. You know, the spacing is a little bit too perfect. And then I personally don't like this at all. I don't like these branches where it starts to come out and towards the top, especially I understand it's supposed to be fall. There's not supposed to be a lot of foliage on this tree, but just as it is right here, all that just doesn't look good to me. The stock, the, I guess the branches themselves look more like a sea creature or something just falls apart for me. I would rather see that be shorter and uh, yeah, more, more squat and just looks a little bit weird but the rest of this building looks pretty good the designer said that he took inspiration from the victorian houses in san francisco and also houses in amsterdam which is great taking taking inspiration from multiple cultures and multiple eras is fantastic and i i think ideal for this series while still focusing on a a classic um a classic general aesthetic that is very compatible with the most loved of the the modular buildings that have been done to date. You know, the most recent ones were very strictly, or very strongly inspired by, I'd say, like 40s to 50s, more like 40s Americana. And they're interesting. I think they're done pretty well, but they don't have as much appeal to as many people as things more like this. This just has more of a global appeal, I think, and importantly, importantly, fits in much better than the last two that they did with the previous ones. You know, even some of the the sets that they've done in the past have been American based. They've still been able to fit into many different people uh, people's cities, I think, around the world comfortably, and this can do that, I think. So the inspiration that's used here, I think is good. The color scheme here, I think is good. I'm not a big fan of, of using these tile pieces, to be honest with you, for this kind of decoration without something else in front of them, without stacking it. Like in here, you got some nice, uh, some nice depth, but just ha this ends up looking very, very flat to me. And I had that same problem with the uh, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker um, Y-Wing, which has some surfaces that are shaped up like this like you get that nice the curving is nice but i think the the surface itself is is just a little bit too flat i like this i like this little ledge in here yeah pretty good stuff done there and the shaping of this building i don't know which one i like better i definitely like the colors here but then i like this as well i don't know i don't know which one i like better <laughs> they're both pretty darn good i i do as much as i do respect and like this uh this bay window here, though, 
do feel like the frames in between are a little bit on the thick side. Meh, it's kind of a kind of a nitpick there. But there, uh, these little lamps next to the the doorway have the small pyramid piece on top, and you've seen those pyramids used elsewhere, such as on the the uh, bed I mentioned. But that looks just fantastic to me. I love that. I love so much that that piece exists and in transparent colors. It's wonderful, really wonderful. It's just more of a straight on look and that's just against a different background with different lighting. Almost the same thing, just getting a little bit closer. We're all seeing the same thing. So talking about and looking at details just a little bit more, the basement area over here is actually usable. That is actually a mouse trap. You can't see it very well in this picture. I'm gonna go through them again, see if we get more, uh, more of the pictures from the other side of this. Um, that one printed tile that we've gotten before. Better look at the the nest up here, actually. And I do like this little shaping down here. Again, using the relatively recent tiles. But you know how I, I pointed out that the <laughs> some of the pictures have a lot of this disassembled? This is about the best you can see of the interior <laughs> of the, the bookstore here. Like, there is that bookshelf back there. The cashier's uh, table is over here. So there's, there are no books on, on the wall here. That's unfortunate. There's just that one little row of books there. And then there's a small book shelf over here. So, and then a tiny, tiny one here. Really not a lot of books in the one outside. Not a lot of books. You know, normally when I think of bookstores, especially more like boutique ones that are a little older and then have older material in them, not the most modern stuff. Um, I, I think of places that are pretty darn full. You know, where the, the books are just everywhere. Even when they're nicely organized, they'll have shelves behind the counter. They'll have shelves pretty much everywhere you look. Nowadays, we're moving towards you know, having coffee shops and bookstores and everything. But I think for something like this, where it's a, a book fan, most likely a, a serious literature fan who runs the place, it would have been really full of books. And I feel like this is a bit of a missed opportunity here. Could have used more. Notice the side over here. Notice how that is all, almost all the same color. So this is like I was saying, how it's designed to be viewable. Even if you take the build, the two buildings apart, swap their sides or anything, like there's nothing wrong with this. It's, it's a little plain, you know, but at least there's no encroachment of weird colors that you really don't want to see. So I appreciate that, uh, that attention to detail there. Then you come up here and, you know, this is about a 45 degree angle you're, you're looking down and you can't see very well in there. This is quite a bit of height. And that is a symptom of how small and tight of a space this actually is. If you try to get in there and pose figures, it's going to be difficult. This one has a little bit more room inside of it. Hey, more of those pyramid pieces used in different places. Look at that. Uh, I'm interested to see what's going on with that closet, if there's anything inside that closet. This is actually a coat, like a, a coat hanger rack on the side. Let's see if there were any. I didn't notice if there were any good pictures of that in in this uh, set of pictures, but they just have some horizontally mounted black uh, microphone pieces, three of them. So you can put a hat on there, and you can hang a, a uh, umbrella as well. And these are just showing a little bit more of the close up of the of the detail again. But I wanted to. I want. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So there's the mouse trap. So let's just see the mouse trap, and then there's, there's also just this small little table for doing some work underneath and i'm assuming that the shears there would be for tending to the garden in the back so you've got a little little bit of access underneath and you have to imagine you know that you can get in here and actually use this space because there's also this stairway to go down there oh oh uh dear first floor um doo -doo. yeah that door okay not the closet that door Hmm. Uh, where am I going? Sorry. That door leads to here and goes down. That's what it is. Not a closet. Leads to here. That's the answer to that. Um, and then looking around here, see the whole stair system here is nice. I like the green color. That's that's pretty cool. It's a little thin right here. Difficult to put a figure in that space. You know, it, it is possible, but a little difficult. It's a little wonky. It gets a little weird, but really restricts use of this space and it's too bad they don't give you a good overhead view again check out the review at brickset.com to see all of these things as they're being built so you can really see the details 
that unfortunately, once the thing is built, you don't see very much at all anymore. Uh, and it's very difficult to get in there and appreciate that space. I believe this is like a, a chase lounge by the window there. Nice little balcony back here. Simple as it is. Hey, more of those <laughs> pyramid pieces. Uh, I think some other texture would have looked a little bit better here. This looks a little bit too brutalist almost to me. Just I don't know, really nitpicking there. And then the better look at some of the furniture upstairs. All this stuff in here is pretty nice too, I think. Just a different look at the, the bed. And see, like that detail there it wasn't really necessary, but I appreciate that it's there. And again, with the, the colors on different sides of the, the different major modules, they, they fit, you know, they don't clash. So I appreciate all that. Uh, it's just the interior spacers are going to be a little bit on the small side. Uh, beyond that, I think it's just going to display really, really nicely in many different contexts. I'm just going to push this all the way out to here. And... Yeah, if you want to modify the tree, I highly recommend that. Make the tree look a little bit more alive. Make it look a little more believable, maybe. The more I look at it, the less I like it, to be honest with you. But that's not that big of a deal. Most of what you're paying for is in the buildings themselves. I do even like the little railing around the base of the, the planter there. Make made it look like some uh, powder-coated or painted wrought iron. And those are little... Uh, Little sausage pieces hot dog pieces in black that are that are mounted there so that's pretty nice overall the level of detail here is is fantastic attention to detail is very good and the i think the care given to or concern given to how people will actually display these things is is excellent here is much better than with many of the buildings that they've done before officially this releases on january 1 2000 20 some advanced review copies have already gone out so if you want to see more pictures of this check around definitely check out the one at brickset.com I, I would recommend as as a starting point they do an excellent job over there and uh yeah that's pretty much all that i have to say about this one for now i look forward to getting this and integrating it into my city temporarily at least until i get more custom stuff done to take up the space thanks for watching i'll talk to you again soon